uh, with oneness group for one day and it was great cool. very nice tell us about it a little bit give us a brief uh, overview of that tell us a little bit about it uh, so you know in oneness um uh, they have these uh, courses that uh, they repeat every month you know they have one once a, a month uh, a one day course and um, these one one day courses um, consist of uh, some um, teachings and then meditation on, on those teachings and then uh, dancing believe it or not there's a lot of dancing, <laughs> music and dancing. Did you yeah. dance, Lima? I had to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, it's hard to believe, but dancing really has a powerful effect on, uh, you know, somehow um, uh, raising your vibration and, uh, you know, helping you get to where you want to be. No problem. Right. Yeah, it does. It's, it's one of the ways of uh, grounding teachings within you. Exactly. Thank you. you. Do, and if you get up and dance, it grounds it within your, in all the aspects, all of the chakras. Yeah? Yes. That's yes. why we use that in radical forgiveness, too. Yeah. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we sure do. And music as well um, also has an, an impact, an energetic impact yeah. on us as beings. So, the music, the movements, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and. Uh, oh, Ziba. So, Ziba, did you have anything else you wanted to share? No, sir. That's it. Thank you. All right. Okay. So. I was talking about, uh, mom was talking about how, you know, the, the radical forgiveness uh, seminars that she's having are really taking off and she's got new clients and um, I was talking about how I'm about to interpret uh, the book of Revelations for Ooh. my, wow. uh, for my uh, uh, Bible interpretations, Acts to Revelations, so I'm, I'm uh, going to be, uh, my uh, last assignment for that class is to interpret the entire book of Revelation. So I've been really studying it and uh, kind of working on that and getting yeah. a good idea of everything that uh, that's going to be going into it. I mean, it's like, it's like it's a scary thing or as far as the book of Revelation is very scary for a lot of people. Um, but it wasn't uh, intended to be that way in its conception when it was written. So there's a lot of different uh, aspects of Revelations. Um, back then, people were being persecuted. So, as far as let's put it on do not disturb. I'm trying to. As far as uh, people were being persecuted, and so they had to write uh, different uh, uh, propaganda pieces back in those days to uplift people, um, to give them hope. You know, letting them know that, you know, that the salvation was theirs, that they just, you know, and, and, and heaven would wait um, just to keep the faith, you know. And so um, that was the original intent or part of the original intent for writing the different books of Revelation. But the book that we have in the Bible, it is a compilation of different letters is what it is. So I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a uh, 750 word essay on that. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to start meditation. And since we have uh, Reverend Sheila Gotra, I don't have to do anything now. I can just sit here and just relax. And you know, my mom is here to go ahead and do the meditation. I've been having to carry the load on that. You know, me and sometimes funny, but hey, <laughs> take it away, mom. Okay. All right. All right. Put, so, put you to work. Let's, um, <laughs> let's get in our seats and let the full weight be just completely resting in whatever you're sitting on, allowing your feet to lay flatly and without tension upon the floor. 
and find a comfortable way to rest your hands. And then gently close your eyes and allow the body and the mind to surrender. Encourage it to let go of whatever it may be holding on to, whatever concerns it may have. And be willing to surrender it tonight <clears throat> for this moment in time. And as we surrender, we open the portal for the Holy Spirit to pour into and upon us the power and the presence of infinite spirit, God. I am. And feel an opening at the top of our heads. And feel it pouring in down the central channel. Moving away anything that may be of concern or anything that removes our power. And allow the presence of God, of infinite spirit, to simply pour itself within and upon us. Feel the movement of this energy as it moves down the spine. Cross our shoulders down our arms through our hands down our back down our legs through our ankles and out through our feet establishing it as an We are anchored in the divine presence of infinite spirit. Where all things are now, have always been, and will forever be. In perfect order. And infinitely fulfilled. We are anchored in power. We are anchored in peace. We are anchored in love. We are anchored in abundance. We are anchored, anchored in all that God is. For it is all that we are. And in this moment, there is no space between us and God and us and each other. We are wholly joined.
our breath breathing in and out together and our hearts beating as one. I am you and you are me. Perfect union. The oneness of the one. So let us rest for a moment in that pure essence of our collective one. You're one. There cannot be other ones. A sweet the tenderness of this moment. For our minds are joined and our hearts beat as well. May we collectively send forth the power of this oneness out into our neighborhoods, our communities, our city, our state, our country. And our world. Recognizing that even where there is a misperception of separation, there can only be one. And we're grateful. We're grateful for the awareness of this. We're grateful for the experience of this. And we're grateful that it cannot be otherwise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Christ in our being. Thank you, God. And so it is. Let us uh, begin our opening prayer. I am here only to be truly helpful. I'm here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do. For he who sent me will direct me. 
I am content to be wherever he wishes. I am Knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed. As I let him teach me to heal. And so it is. Amen. All right. Okay. So. Thanks. I needed that. You needed what, Mo? Did you remember that commercial? Thanks. I needed that. Oh, somebody hit somebody upside the head. No, they hit themselves. Right, right, right. What was that commercial for? I can't remember. Well, it was. It was a. It was a. Was, it was a, something for the men shaving something. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the men's skin bracer. That's what it was. Oh, yeah, when they were smack them. Yeah, yeah. they were smack them. I needed They were smack the mess out of them. They almost seemed violent. So, well, they would smack themselves. Okay, yeah. After they put it on, they would smack themselves yeah. and say, Thanks, I needed that. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I would kind of cringe and be painting, just looking at that, you know, just trying to bring back some trauma. You know what I mean? So, PTSD, Mom. No, I know that. <laughs> so forget this word for you.
excel to the extent that we are as powerful as God, because otherwise, how do we turn this ship around before it's an iceberg? Absolutely, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, can, can we turn the ship around as lowly worms in the dust, or can we or can we turn it around as God? So I, I'm, I'm with you on that, one hundred percent. Yes, that is a that is another effect of this status quo consciousness. Okay, that attempts to teach us that it is an attribute, it is, it is a, a virtue to be small. No. Yeah, it, it's upside down. It, no. it, it, it's upside down. It is a virtue. It is a virtue to fit in. Yeah. And yet it says that we're made in the image and likeness of God. Oh God. What does God fit into? <laughs> and I used to scratch my head. Yeah. I don't get it. I swear. But we can't. We can't be powerful as God. But we're making God's image and likeness, and I, it it was never made sense to me. You know. You know. I mean, if you can tear yourself away from the devaluation consciousness of man and really just analyze it and look at it like a computer could, if you feed certain data into a computer, you tell this computer, okay, so there is no place that God is not, okay, and the computer will probably ask you, well, where am I, okay, and, you know, and if, once you let the computer know where it is, and so where is God, there is no place that God is not, okay, I am God then. See, the computer will immediately come, it come right to that. But human beings, even if you tell them all of that, it still will not come. Oh, that doesn't compute. You know what I mean? Because they, you've got that whole lowly worm. Oh my dust. God, the worm of the dust. A lowly worm of the dust. Low down sinners <laughs> and born in iniquity. And so, so there is just basically what I'm saying is there is, there is a devaluation. And so there is a dissonance, which is what they talk about in, in, in many spiritual texts. There's a dissonance um, between what we really are and what we perceive ourselves to be. There's a huge dissonance, and that's kind of what this book is about, is shrinking the dissonance, mm -hmm. and, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. Well, this, this book wants us to turn this ship around. <laughs> right, right. As God would, not as though yeah. yeah. exactly. we're to the dust. Exactly. Right, exactly. right. So, yeah, I, I, that, that was always really strange to me, and that's why it was a point at which I left the church. Mm -hmm. um, but... I'm made in the image and likeness of God, but I can't be as powerful as God. No, no, absolutely. And it's a sin not. to think that you are as powerful as God. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. But as a matter of fact, God's gonna come and destroy you. You know, we need to, we need to, we need to have a revival up here. Something, you know, get get some, get the devil out of here. I'm the child. You know, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and my being one, see, you didn't come up in that. Mm -hmm. My being one who came up in that, I heard it all. I heard all that stuff that people uh, were taught. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got to the point where this doesn't make sense to me. And so I left the church. But, um, yeah. yeah. And I was determined that you all were not going to go up in that. What do you think, Ziba? Um... There's something that I'm thinking about um, the fact that, uh, you know, what you said with regards to us wanting to uh, bring us down, like uh, being humble, maybe, you know, him, human beings try to be humble and uh, think low, lower of themselves, maybe because 
we know grandiosity is a problem. And so uh, the reaction to grandiosity that we feel sometimes is probably uh, creating this, um, uh, you know, um, facade of, of humility. <laughs> uh, Perfect word, facade of humility. I love how you put that. Zuma. That's perfect. I love how you put that. Facade of humility. Because it's not real. <laughs> I love it. I love it. When they say in the hood, they front. I'm sorry, what did, what did you say? Oh, in the hood, when you, when you pretend to, to, to do something, you know. They front. It's called fronting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confronting. Yeah. Yeah, they just front. That's all. Yeah. Right. 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 So, yeah, some good stuff. What, what do you think, Dad? Thank you. I, I like the use of the word facade. I mean, just think about what, what were you taught when you were young? What, what was your idea of humility? You know, what was... Well, I certainly wasn't taught that I was equal to the Almighty. I mean, it was like... We were minuscule in comparison to God. Exactly. So that's the, that's the whole lowly worms and dust syndrome. We just call it the lowly worms and dust up, syndrome. And I came up in the same kind of teaching mm -hmm. yeah okay. lowly yeah. words in the dust syndrome okay yeah. um but like you said if you thought that you were last for me mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yeah. You know? yeah and um there was a time as a matter of fact people could get killed for thinking such things Absolutely. there was a time you know Absolutely. now you now you know we're, we're we have all these we're spoiled you know, by having, you know, free thinking and, you know, freedom of speech. You can be killed in it. They got different parts of the, different areas in the world where people can still get killed. You know, they don't have freedom of speech like that everywhere. You know, I mean, we're kind of able to to basically speak our mind and share our truths here. Um, but yeah, there was, there was a time period that all over the world people would get killed for saying something to the effect that, um, Potentially, you know, that they were God, just to say that you you you, you were God, and, and like I said, if you, if you just feed it into a computer, it, it just basically takes the whole charge away. There's a human charge that we actually had, which is what associated myself, and I felt it in my first Unity class um, in Gaithersburg um, when it was real. I mean, I was more comfortable with Child of God. You know, but then when it, I, it, I really just started just really looking at it, exploring it, I was like, man, what is it within me that is rejecting this? Like, like from, you know, like a, something uh, like, like a, the body rejects white blood cells. What is it in, in my mind that is rejecting this? So I had to really just look within and just see the programming and things like that, of smallness and littleness in the world, you know, that, you know, I still took in and accepted it to be true. You know, and so yeah, I accepted it to be true that that was causing the, the rejection in my mind from putting me anywhere, anywhere close to the beingness of God. So I have a question to ask you. When you were younger, you acted like you were God. Anything you wanted, you created it. What happened? Life happened. Different experiences happen. You know, when you were younger, it was a, when I was younger, it was a, a, a different experience. Uh, everything was everything was just natural, you know. And so, and even though I had a foundation, which is why it wasn't, which is why it wasn't as uh, difficult of a, a task for me to shrink the dissonance that I created in my mind in my time in the wilderness because I still went through a wilderness experience. Um, so my time in the wilderness, you know, it was definitely a, a, a good time for me. It's a period of growth and evolution, but I also created a certain amount of dissonance being out in the world as well. Um, 
I also didn't have a, 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 a I didn't also didn't have a, a an adequately constructed sense of self. So um, I would construct my sense of self based on you know what I perceived in the world as far as people you know reacting towards me. So all those things combined, yeah, that kind of uh, creates that that dissonance. So even when we grow up knowing this stuff and being taught only this stuff. The foundation. Right. Right. I mean, you know, that, that you're one with God, that you and God are one and stuff like that. There is still, there are still things that can come in. Later on. Yeah, so, in, in yeah. time, yes. And, and shake that foundation and tear down some parts of it or at least cover it up. Cover it, it up is a better it doesn't word. really, it doesn't really go, it doesn't really go away. Because once, once my, and I'm like, I'm glad how you bring that up, but because once I began my journey back home, yeah. then it was like, all of like you know like uh it's like i was dressed almost like a different person and so all that stuff started just peeling off me in layers and and so then i began to become get more and more like my original person my original self again however i was my original self um that had been in the in the wilderness okay so i still had a certain amount of growth there but it was for me it was more of a, a returning back home type thing because I had that foundation. If I didn't have that foundation. It's what they call the remembering. Right. It's called the remembering. So you began to remember what you had um, pushed aside in order to- Covered up all that, covered up. Co okay. Yeah. Covered up. <laughs> I like covered up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. In order to fit in the world or whatever the world is. That's a good one. In order to fit in the world, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. that, 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 yeah. That, 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 that's another. One. Yes. It was like a fit in the world yes. type thing. Yes, yes, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. But it, it wasn't a huge uh, journey back because mm -hmm. technically you really hadn't left. Yeah, and and and, and like you I said, had, oh, 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 you had simply camouflaged. Right, that's what I said. That's what I said. I, had, I, I was just like a different person. You know, but then, but as I was, as I was coming back home, yeah. the, 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 the difference is something like peeling off like layers. You know what I mean? And then I started, yeah, returning back to my original yeah. form. But yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying. But there's a lot of people that didn't have that foundation, and there's a huge dissonance. There is. You know. There is. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. We we want to talk about the uh, uh, nine uh, nine anymore. Ziva, did you have any specific questions about any sentences in uh, uh, nine? No, thank you. That's it. Dad, yeah, do you have any more questions? No, I'm good. All right, Mom. No, I'm good. All right. Um, that was a great set. Yeah, it was. I am going to... Ziva, you mind reading paragraph 10? Uh, uh, sure, thank you. Okay. You are altogether irre irreplaceable in the mind of God. No one can, else can find your part in it. And while you leave your part of it empty, your eternal place merely waits for your return. God, through his voice, reminds you of it. And God himself keeps your extensions safe within it. Yet you do not know them until you'd return to them. You cannot replace the kingdom and you cannot replace yourself. God who knows your value would not have it so, and so it is not so. Your value is in God's mind and therefore not in yours alone. To accept yourself as God as God created you, cannot be arrogance, because it is the denial of arrogance. To accept your littleness is arrogant, because it means that you believe your evaluation of yourself is truer than God's. Mm. Mm. 
from yeah. that perspective, he gives us a thank you, Ziva. He gives us a, a different perspective. You think your evaluation is truer than God's. That's profound. Right. Yeah, it is profound. Yeah. Your extensions are safe. God himself keeps your extensions safe. You know, like based on like our, our past, our last conversation, like when I began to return home and begin to kind of remember who I was, you know, it was like those are those extensions that were that were safe, you know, that, that foundation that was it didn't need, it didn't go anywhere. No, it was it was still it was still safe. <laughs> you know, once you know, you can't unknow. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yes, absolutely. Once you know something, right? Mm -hmm. You can't unknow it. Because if, if, if it's true, exactly. <laughs> it's true. If, if it's true, you can't unknow it. You can't unknow it. Exactly. If it's true. Yeah. If it's false, that's a different story. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> but if it's, it's the truth. The truth, right. You can't unknow it. Exactly. You know, but I, 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 was, I was already before, I was already before. I came to the body. I was already okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the extension, the understanding of myself, and understanding the foundation, that makes perfect sense as far as being an extension. Okay, that was an extension, and but it, but it was perfectly safe, you know. Uh, uh, and and and, I, and as soon as I you know began my journey back home, it was there. Yeah. It was right there. Safe awaiting my return, just like it says in this uh in this pattern. And when, when we come when we come into this realm, because we are here to grow, to evolve, to learn more, um, there is a forgetting. Mm -hmm. And then we go through life until we rise up to the remembering. Mm -hmm. And so even if at some point you go off the path and your remembering is camouflaged, the, the existence is always there. And whenever you step back into that realm of knowing, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You know, but the but when we first come into this incarnation, we deliberately come in with a forgetting. Right. Yeah. So that we can have the experiences that we want to have in this incarnation in order to evolve. Well, so it would just be pretend. Mm -hmm. right. it would, it would just, I mean, it is pretend, but I mean, we would know it would be pretend at that point. You know, we right. would know we were paying, playing a video game. You know, right. you know what I mean? Right. Well, it's just a video game. Right. You know, I'll just go ahead and jump off a building, kill myself, and then, you know what I mean? I'll just start over again, you know? And so instead of trying to actually really grow through the challenge, yes. you know what I mean, and try to, you know, uh, you know, turn this thing around and stuff like that, I just, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and jump off a building and I'll be all right, you know, just get a guy or whatever. I'll start over again. I'll be back now, you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I love these conversations. Yeah. What you think, Dad? Sense. Some of the stuff is hard to digest, but it's it's, it's getting through to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, all my life, I was told God is up here and I'm down here. Mm -hmm. So this is a total new concept. It just takes a while to get acclimated to thinking like that. And how does that feel, though? To, to when you begin when you begin to uh, know this and when you actually start to feel it and explore it and accept it, how does that feel? Um, it makes me realize that you know maybe I have more influence over things than I thought I did in the past. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting way you put that. I like the way you put that. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, 
Michael Jackson had a song called The Man in the Mirror. Yes. And you know, if you want to change the world, just look in that mirror. Start there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. As within, so without. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And before we move on, I just want to I just want to say is what the knowledge that I've seen in you that has has you already have had you already had a a high amount of conventional knowledge. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that, because just basically treating people the way that you would want to be treated and stuff like that you know um i've i've seen you know i've been privileged to see how how you have um been since you know we've been living together since what was it 2014 yeah sometime about 18 as a matter of fact and so what what i what i have seen is is somebody without any without any uh books or anything like that um but someone who has a, a inner knowledge that, that that transcends all of this stuff that we're reading that we're reading and stuff like that so when i would say that like you know you're you're a master inside that's what i was actually talking about that there's a you know there's a there's something that i see within you that it is truly powerful in you, you know, and I see you manifesting things into your life and stuff like that and 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 just following the golden rule, you know. And so I just want to just say I, I appreciate um observing what I've been privileged to observe. So okay, well. You know, until you brought it to my attention, I never really thought about it. But uh, I'm glad that I came to Houston because we had grown rather, rather distant. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. But uh, hey, you know, I'm glad we're on the same page. Me too. Me too. Ziva, do you have anything you want to talk, discuss, and? Uh, on par this pa paragraph, no, I I don't have anything on this. Okay. Well, no. you... oh, there's there's I'm sorry. There's one thing. Um, your extensions. Uh, I know we have talked about this before, and um, I suppose uh, our extensions are what everything that we create from love. Uh, is that right? Yes, that's that's the uh, that's the uh, ABC textbook answer of it. Absolutely, everything we create from love is extension, and things that we create from fear is projection. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, um, I was kind of putting it in a different in a in a in a different context because you know. If I look at it from a standpoint that I began as a, as a person, then extensions would then, from that standpoint, be the loving things that I that you know I create as the Fleming. Um, but if I look at it that my point of origin began, you know, as spirit, then you know the mental constructs within Stephen Fleming of truth and knowledge are my extensions. And so that's what I mean as far as my understanding, the foundation that I created in truth of who I really was when I went out into the wilderness and went through this and that and just, you know, just, you know, living in the desert and, you know, just, you know, just partying and doing whatever I was doing and stuff like that. But there was still a part of me that remembered who I was. And so that is the extension. If I'm, if I'm referring to myself as spirit, then I look at the true aspect of Stephen Fleming as the extension at that point. But if I look at myself as a person, period, as just a person or personality, then it's the, 
the loving things that I that, that the personality actually does. That, that. So there's there's two different. Am, am, am I making any sense, Eva? Um, uh, yes and no because uh, I hear, and I I may be wrong, but I hear you saying that uh, every if you're a spirit, then that's already an extension. Is that what you're saying? I'm right. saying I'm saying if we are spirit, okay, then the the true constructs or true perceptions or true understandings of knowledge that we have built up within ourselves would would be part of our extension is what I'm saying. The the truth of who we are, the truth of who we are as far as the realization because beneath all of that we already know who we are we already know who we are beneath all of that beneath the you know what we have built right right for the foundation in this life you know mm -hmm. we already we already know who we are in, 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 in truth below that surface maybe we can't access it all of the time sometimes we can access it during meditation and stuff like that um and we call it intuition and stuff like that but at the same time, you know, we just don't have full, unfettered access to that. Um, so, so I, I mean, it's, 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 it's always, this is a difficult thing to describe because you start getting into the, into the realm where, where words begin to fail. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you start getting into an area where words begin to fail, then it's, you have to start talking about things like, well, it's like this and like that, you know, and so, but when you get back to the truth of who you really are, which is that that depth that you're able to reach in during deep meditation and stuff like that, that transcends the uh, knowledge of the, of the self that you that you built up uh, 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 being a person. That's that's the deep that's the deep knowledge. That's the deep truth of who you are. And so I was just saying from that standpoint, uh, where it says God keeps your extension safe. But I kept my extension safe because when I went out in the wilderness and stuff like that, I for it seemed like I kind of completely forgot who I was. But but once I decided to go back home, it was just basically a return back to those those foundational truths that I had already established, that had already weathered, that are, had already stood the test of time as far as anything with, with, you know that I'd experienced. Um, you know, just because I experienced a certain dissonance and things like that, there was still a foundation that I already had established within. That foundation is an extension to me. Are you there? Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking, you know, yes, you make sense, but um, what I'm thinking is, uh, we are already God, and being God or a child of God, we are already um, we are certain things like certain. We have these qualities uh, that God has characteristics, whatever you want to call it. But then. Uh, Talking about extension, uh, extensions, um, because um, in this book, it is said that uh, we create, uh, you know, from love, like extensions are uh, our creations. Okay, all right. So, so when we create, it's it's like adding to what we already are. Okay, now let's take that idea that you're saying. Let's just hold that thought, okay? Uh -huh. Hold that thought, I'm glad you brought it up that way. This is wonderful. Okay. So, everything that we experience, Ziva, is an idea of who we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is an idea that we actually have of who we are. We can be in alignment with who we are. That idea and that knowledge of who we are can be in alignment 
with who we really are. Mm -hmm. um, it's still an idea. It is still a mental construct. It mm -hmm. is still a mentally constructed idea of self. Mm -hmm. Now, if that mentally constructed idea of self is in alignment with the, with the Christ of your being, that is an extension. It is an extension. I see. That mentally constructed idea of self did not occur until you were born. Mm -hmm. You already existed, however. You, are, you already existed before you were born, but you did not have a mentally constructed idea of yourself until mm -hmm. you were born. Well, because before you were born, you, you, you knew who you were. Right. And, and didn't didn't have any concept about anything else. And it wasn't a mentally constructed it, idea. Exactly. I okay. mean, you didn't know anything else. All you knew was your oneness, your wholeness, your perfection, and so forth. Right. But when we stepped into this human realm, mm -hmm. and you know, the reason we do it is because we're attempting to continue our journey of of learning and growing, of evolving. Mm -hmm. until we don't need to do this anymore so when you step into this even though you just stepped out of the realm of allness of all knowing mm -hmm. when you step in there is a and it's in the course use it in some other too there is a forgetting and a temporary forgetting mm -hmm. go ahead man. i'm sorry and that is only so that when you are having the experiences that you have the experiences that you want to have in order to grow to the next level um we come we keep coming in because there are things we want to work on and so it's already set up in the universal system to send into our into our experiences to send into our lives the things that we are seeking to help us to evolve at an even higher level in this incarnation. And does that make any sense? Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. And so, you know, each time we do this coming back into the human realm, there is a forgetting, but that is deliberate. Mm -hmm. Because if we know that, that we are God, we're going around and things happen. I'm, I'm not even worried about I'm God. Well, then you're not evolving. You're not growing mm -hmm. in the direction that you want it to. Mm -hmm. But there is a forgetting. And, and the evolution in consciousness is the remembering. That's and, and one other thing. Only a mentally constructed idea of self can interact in this temporal universe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Spirit can't really interact in the spirit. So in other words, we're bringing, when we get in alignment with spirit, when our mentally constructed idea of self gets in alignment with spirit, then we can bring more of spirit through that mentally constructed idea of self and into this world. But spirit is not able to really interact in this world per se, okay? And, and, and Spread like, but, but you except know, so except through the mentally constructed idea of self. Yeah. Okay, exactly. so as as mentally constructed idea of self begins to be in more in alignment. Now keep in mind that's still an extension. That's something that was created. The mentally constructed idea of self is still something that was created. Now it is. Now once you get this in alignment, then it begins to perceive truly and see as Holy Spirit sees. Okay, the mentally constructed idea of self can only perceive. It cannot see per se. It doesn't have real vision. It will never have real vision. Okay, right. it will never see all the angles and stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. it will only be able to perceive, but it will be able to perceive truly once it is completely in alignment with spirit. But the mentally constructed idea of self is still a creation. It is an extension. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I would have to, you know, ponder on this. Yeah, please, 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 that's what I, 
I do that all the time. I tell my mom say something to me sometimes, Steve. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not saying I disagree with it. I'm saying I agree with it. I'm saying I need to ponder on it. <laughs> 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 I don't mean to say I disagree, uh, but I I am not sure I completely get it right now. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And whenever you, whenever you get a chance, we're gonna go back to your old people. Um, it's like I do a lot of uh, a lot of pondering myself a lot of pondering like at night and walking around and stuff and you know i'll be calling people up and what you think about this and i'll be talking to mom for hours and stuff i call claudia I'll tell you i i'll talk people's heads off about stuff you know um so um but yeah just think about that just chew on it just chew on it if you ever want to talk some more on it if you got my number you thank know? you sure absolutely Absolutely. Call him. Call me. Yep. Call mom. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is this is what I do. <laughs> right. Right. I know. I, do. I know. All right. So. We're I am blessed. Well, we are at eight o'clock. It is break time. So we are going to go ahead and take a 10 minute break, Zima, use the restroom, whatever, and we'll be okay. right back. Right. Uh, you want some water, Mom? Yes. Yeah, I have a lot of water, but I'll let it Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of water. Yeah, I'm going to Ice cream. <laughs> 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 
of some ice cream up in here just about to eat this ice cream. Uh, I haven't checked in on Zay on Jazz and her journey. Um, I could do that. You know, Jazz is uh, walking across country, right? Yes, I'm not. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. yeah. I haven't uh, had a chance to uh, tune in. Yeah, that's something I don't think I can do walk across country. I think it's cool. I think if you're able to do it, if you're if you're fit and you can do it, why not? Can you imagine the story that you people talk about? Right. It doesn't mean that you have to do it within a certain amount of time. You take as long as you want. You take your time. Exactly. Well, you're not running around. I think if you only walk 25 miles a day, you're looking at over four months to go from Los Angeles to New York. Yeah, but if you don't have something else, anything else to do, and you stop in here, and you're hanging out here, you're doing this, and you're doing that. Yeah, you're not just walking. It becomes a, that becomes a real journey. Yeah. You know, you you're know, meeting people. I'm sure you can write a book yeah. with all the, all the experience you get it. I've experienced it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, she's not having a race. <laughs> no. She's not having a race. No, she's she she just chilling, walking mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could have done something like that what? 20 years what ago. Do you do with clothes? Yeah, yeah but that's right. Your backpack. Your backpack. Your backpack. Your backpack. Your backpack. And you simplify your attire. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. You want to be comfortable. Got to have lots of walking shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take maybe three pair of jeans and five or six tops. And shorts. You got some shorts. Yeah. You know, for high, you know, high days. Five places. Can you imagine yeah. the change in weather going from California to New York from this time of year? Why yeah. can't you just New York though? New York will have my house with weather. It's springtime. That's what I'm saying. It'll be good weather. So. Well, maybe. <laughs> mm. Mm. Maybe. You know, she could be going through some cold yes. states. Well, mm. We're having winter in the summer. We have the summer in the winter. Mm. Yeah. So mm. there's no guarantee. And we're going to be having some strange weather because. Well, global, global warming is definitely a fact. Well, the waters haven't cooled off. So it's going to be interesting. I don't know if that means a lot of hurricanes or whatever, mm -hmm. but the water never cooled off. The water is still warm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, the sun heats up the oceans. Yeah, I'm just talking mm -hmm. about that we haven't been getting the cold that we normally get. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's way it's way above the normal temperatures. So the scientists are saying that the water, you know, they're, they're talking mm -hmm. about in this area, for instance. So they're saying we could we could have uh, uh, hurricanes and stuff Some like that. Icebergs are starting to melt. Yeah, they're melting. The four polar bears now are suffering because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, man is going to have to do something to turn this thing around. That's, that's my own expression. That's what I mean when I said we can turn this ship around before it's an iceberg. Hmm. Um, yeah. So just the iceberg, you know, that's the crash. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if we really just abuse this planet. Oh God, we're so selfish. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I keep thinking, was it, was it a commercial? It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. You know, 
There are some that believe that this world is a lot older than we think. There are some that believe, there are some that believe that there's been civilizations like ours before that were knocked back to the stone age, stone ages, you know, because of stuff like this. So, you know, who knows? You know? Hey, you know, um, when we had an ice age. Okay. Well, I tend to think um, we're not the only one, you know, there's many universes out there. There could be other civilizations much more advanced than we are. Oh, I, Somewhere I, I, out there. I wouldn't put that there. You know? yeah. So like, hey, why should we think we were the only ones selected? Uh, just a lot of space. That's all. It's a whole lot of space just to say mm -hmm. that we're the only ones. So, so, you know. Yeah, but it was just, you know, it was one time we thought the world was flat, so you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, so you know, yeah. we, 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 we don't move forward, we'll be all right, you know, yes, we thought we were all one moving through the universe on a plane. Yeah, go so far, we just fall off on the plane. I mean, the age of the world, and, 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 and that's only because the information that's been disseminated to society has been like you know, monitored and censored by the government. The government wouldn't be talking about creating a space force if it were if there wasn't anything out there. Okay? And so they talking about creating and uh, they not now but they've already done a uh have appropriated uh, a, a space force. You know, it's gonna be our our new uh thing. And they're gonna take parts of the Air Force, parts of NASA, parts of the Navy, just a couple of things in the Navy, that's gonna be all be in this space force. Now why would they have a space force for nothing? <laughs> and they okay. trust me on this one. They have already selected a couple of planets. Mm. A couple of what? Planets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to destroy this one. <laughs> 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 truth is indivisible, your evaluation of yourself must be godless. You did not establish your value, and it needs no defense. Nothing can attack it nor prevail over it. It does not vary. It merely is. Ask the Holy Spirit what it is, and he will tell you. But do not be afraid of his answer, because it comes from God. It is an exalted answer because of its source. But the source is true, and so is its answer. Listen, and do not question what you hear, for God does not deceive. He would have you replace the, ego, the ego's belief in littleness with his own exalted answer, with his own exalted answer to what you are, so that you can cease to question it and know it for what it is. Hmm. In other words, the Holy Spirit says, so you heard? Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, can, you can ask Holy Spirit what you want, but don't be afraid of his answer. Mm. You know? Mm. You're not, and I can guarantee you won't be your lowly word of the, the dust. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know what it's going to be, but I'll tell you what it's not going to be. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
Anybody uh, have any, any any questions about uh, paragraph eleven? No, let's wait a little bit. Ziva, how you doing over there? You got any questions about paragraph eleven? Um. So. So an exalted answer means um, doesn't mean a uh, like happy answer. No, um, an no, it means it comes from the higher place. Yeah, uh -huh. it's not from the human realm. Yeah. Okay, it's from the highest possibility. Okay, don't be what the spirit says because right. if you really want to know, ask Holy Spirit. Well, it's good, you. He'll tell you. Make sure it's what you want to know. You know. Make sure you're ready for the answer. Yeah. Right, right. I've gotten some answers from the Holy Spirit. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an exalted answer is what he's saying. And I was just saying that, you know, well, you know, I don't know what, his, what the Holy Spirit's answer is going to be, but I know what his answer is not going to be. It's not going to be your lonely worm and dust. It's not going to be that. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so we are now moving on to a new chapter. And Ziva, guess what? What? You get to start us out in chapter 10. Of course, in Miracles chapter 10, the idols of sickness introduction. The idols <laughs> of sickness. Okay. Introduction. So you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, 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 bring us into the new chapter. Thank you, brother. Okay. All right. Sister. Pardon? I said, all right, sister. Okay. Thanks. So, um, the idols of sickness introduction, nothing beyond yourself can make you fearful or loving because nothing is beyond you. Time and eternity are both in your mind and will conflict until you perceive time solely as a means to regain eternity. eternity. You cannot do this as long as you believe that anything happening to you is caused by factors outside yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. must learn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we just amen and over here. That's all. <laughs> yeah. You must learn that time is solely at your disposal and that nothing in the world can take this responsibility from you. You can violate God's laws in your imagination but you cannot escape from them. They were established for your protection and are as inviolate as your safety. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, Dad, what do you think about that? Nothing beyond you just sentence number one nothing beyond yourself can make you fearful or loving because nothing is beyond nothing is beyond you what do you think about that should be fully aware of everything that's just surrounds you. Okay, think about it. Chew on it for a little bit. How about this? How about the second sentence? Time and eternity are both in your mind and will conflict until you perceive time solely as a means to regain eternity. You cannot do this as long as you believe that anything happens to you. Anything happening to you is caused by factors outside yourself. What do you think about that? 
very thought-provoking, I'll tell you that. You cannot do this as long as you believe that anything happened to you. Because we are that we are at, we are at cause for everything that happens to us. Say that again. We are at cause for everything that happens to us. What you think about it though? Uh, but hold on, just, just just to confuse, make it a little less confusing, okay? Because you know, mom is right, but I just make it a little bit easier, okay? NLP. Let's go back to NLP, which is new linguistic programming, okay? <clears throat> NLP says that it is ninety percent the event that happened. I'm sorry, it's ten percent the event that happened. And 90% how you interpreted that event. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So the whole experience, it was 10% event, 90% Robert Fleming. And Robert Fleming's interpretation of that event. So that event can be anywhere from a Mack truck hitting you to just a butterfly wing, or just a brush of a butterfly wing, you know? In, as far as ranging, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So what would impact somebody else as a, uh, as a brush of a butterfly wing might impact somebody else as a mad truck hitting them, laying them down in the street. Because we call to ourselves that which we need to learn to grow through and so forth. We call into our experience whatever it is that we are needing in order to evolve to that next level in consciousness. So those things that give you a charge there, you're going to naturally, those things that upset you, when I say give you a charge, those things that piss you off are going to naturally, you're going to, you have a higher self that's at work that's going to continue to bring more of those things to you so that you can continue to get pissed off so you can learn from them. That's right. And in that one holy instant when you say, wait, 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 wait. This happened, this happened. Wait a minute. Why am I, why is <laughs> and you start thinking about it okay so in order for this to be happening and it has happened several times there is something in me or in my consciousness that's creating this in order for me to understand something see because nothing happens to us it happens for, for us. us. Exactly. It's for our highest good. Everything, everything in this universe is for our highest good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything. We are not the victim of random acts of good luck or bad luck or being in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. Our lives are purposeful and have meaning. What do you think about that, Ziva? About what? Just about what we were talking, talk, I was talking to my father about. What do you think about that? Um, uh, sentences one, two, and three. Well, um, you know, it tells me that um, we're so powerful. Uh, and um, we have time uh, just to use it uh, in order to get to eternity. And we should not think that things that happen to us, um, actually, they don't happen to us, just like you said. Uh, they happen for us. And the thing is, um, we we cause um, everything that happens to us. We, you know, we're the uh, we're the initiators. Yeah, we are. We are the cause. Definitely. And, and it's and it's it's that part of us that is has that deep desire to grow to evolve. That brings it forth. Even if that the conscious, the even if the conscious self isn't aware of exactly. it. Exactly. Even exactly. if the conscious self is like, what the heck is going like, on? Yeah. What? what yeah. Why is all this happening to me? I'm going to 
higher self, okay? There's the God part in you that's making it happen, moving you towards your greater good. Exactly. And right. it's just saying, oh, you need this. And it's not you happening need. against your it's not happening against your will there. Because right. I want you to understand. Right. Because your right-minded will, you comes to listen, check it out, man. Your right-minded self okay. is in alignment with God. Yes. So you got a right-minded self that knows what it's talking about, exactly. that knows what to do, that knows what the right and appropriate thing to do is. And then you have what you think you are. Okay? You got a right-minded self that knows all of this. And then you have what you think you are. And there could be a dissonance between the two. That's what we're just talking about there. Okay? But the right mind itself is your will. It is your real, your true will. And it will attract that which, what you think you are, needs to become in alignment with your right mind itself. Does that make sense? So it's like, oh, okay, so, so, okay, so you don't like it when these things happen. Huh? Okay, well, let's have a little more of that. Let's have a little more of that. We're going to have it happen a couple of more times, okay? So you don't, so you, you got a problem with that, don't you? Yeah, we're going to get you in alignment, though, with us. We're going to be a whole person sooner or later, and it's going to be soon. You know what I'm saying? We're going we, we to be a whole person by the time we go, you know? And so give them some more, you know? Give them some more. Hmm. Yeah. Because basically, um, we ask before we come in. We actually determine what is it in this incarnation that I want to go through in order to grow through. We, I'm ready for my next evolution in consciousness. So what is it that I really need to learn in order to take that next step? And when you come to the decision, okay, I need to learn this, 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 I need to learn this. And then you step into this incarnation, you've already declared what it is that you need to learn. Once you step in, the universe will pour into your experience all the things that need to occur in order for you to learn what it is you asked to learn in this lifetime. That you forgot, that you mom, forgot. like mom was saying, when you were born, that you yeah. forgot, yeah. okay? But your higher self already knows. But you okay? have to forget, because otherwise, here's what happens. If you remember that you asked for this, when it happened, you go. Right. <laughs> just, just pretend. But then you don't learn anything, because it is the, it is the emotions. It is the, 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 the feeling nature. It is all of the... Uh, impacts on the, the mind, body, spirit that cause you to evolve. So if you remember, you wouldn't really grow. But you have to forget in order to evolve. And that's why I said we are not the victims of random acts of good luck or bad luck or being in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. Our lives are purposeful and have meaning. Everything that occurs in your life has meaning for you, the soul, the soul you. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the, this, the soul you. It has meaning for the soul, Robert the soul. <clears throat> because Robert the soul came in for a purpose. And so all of this is happening, it's evolving, it's, it's it's occurring around you, in you, through you, in order for you to fulfill what it is you said you wanted to discover, learn, and evolve to. Am I making any sense? Um, tragic happened. Let's say I walk outside and get hit by a car. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't get killed, but I'm busted up pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm laid up in a hospital, mm -hmm. you know, Well, what's your question? Well, so you're saying that this is a grand plan, and you know, all these things are going 
the grand declaration of the sun. Yeah. Fruition. Yeah. There is a reason that you even the negative happen. things. Yes, even the negative things. Seeing negative. See that. Uh, well, if I get hit by a car, that's negative. Yeah, see negative. Seeing negative. Seeing. I'll give you an example. Okay. All right. Okay, Tell me, my, I like to be positive. Let me, let me give you an example. My eyesight. Mm -hmm. My eyesight has diminished tremendously, but my insights, I'm having awarenesses that sometimes I have to, to sit, sorry, and just go, oh my God. I mean, this, it just, just, this information, this knowledge, I'm talking about stuff that is so profound. And it's just pouring out of me. Because I no longer have the eyesight. <coughs> insight has gone through the roof. So that's just an example. That's just an example. That's just an example. Uh, so in other words, there, there is synchronicity in everything. Absolutely. God, there's nothing that exists outside of God. <laughs> There is nothing that exists outside of God. There's no events that happen outside of God. So if you want to think about the most horrible thing, yes, God was there too. Now, there's certain people that are going through PTSD because they don't want to accept anything like that, like, you know, Jewish Holocaust, stuff like that. Our brothers and sisters that are Jewish and stuff like that, they don't want to think, you know, that, but, but there is something that they are meant to go through, okay? Now, some people aren't ready to hear that kind of stuff, you see what I mean? Because they still are experiencing pain and stuff like that from their relatives that, you know, they have relatives survivors that told them about, you know, their family that was that was burned and incinerated and crematoriums and stuff like that, you know. So, but everything there, everything has synchronicity in it. When I say synchronicity, I'm just substituting God for synchronicity. Everything has God in it. God is not out outside of anything. God is in every part. And we're not victims. Um, Ziva, are you ready to move on? Did you have a question for you? Um, I, I, something just hit me. Uh, you know, listening to everything that was said uh, here, um, and that is that. Well, okay, if we came to this world, and I have been, you know, uh, accepting this for a long time that, yeah, we're here to, to learn. And, you know, that's our purpose and uh, to, to evolve as a soul. However, that also means that we don't, uh, that we are not perfect as a soul but being a child of god extension of god and being god we just presume that we are perfect so do you see where i'm going with that is there a conflict but it is perfect I mean, Even what appears to be imperfect is perfect, still, for, perfect. for evolution in consciousness. Just, just think about it this way. Everything is about evolution in consciousness. Got it? Everything. Okay. So, you know, it may appear imperfect, but it's perfect when it comes to evolution in consciousness. And I don't want I don't want us to get so tied up in perfect and thinking what because we don't know anything, Zebra. So we don't really know what perfect really is, you know. And so if you really want to open yourself up to truth, um, I invite you to to denounce your knowledge. I invite you to to denounce it. And 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 divest your belief into what you think you know, what you think you see, and what you think you hear, so that you can open up yourself to true knowledge of Holy Spirit. Because we have a very limited 
uh, uh, view of what perfect is, okay? We don't see all the angles like Holy Spirit. So let me give you an example of what, what, I, what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> so I'm the type of person that, um, when even ever since I was little, I have resented authority. Okay, <laughs> and so so. He's not lying, see, but he's not so, lying. So when I, I, I did not associate myself with God, I resented the authority of God. So I I was warring against myself, not thinking that not not seeing it for what it was, and I was really just warring against my high, high nature. Um, because I looked at God as outside of me, as an external or alien force, not being a part of me, okay? Mm -hmm. However, I want to say this, I was still perfect exactly as I was, okay? Even at that point in temporal time, I was, I was still perfect. I'm still perfect now, even though I've learned a lot more. Now, God is within me. I am perfect right now. I still have my rebellious nature. My rebellious nature... Okay, what some people would actually say is a liability. It actually allows me to see certain things, like I can see the status quo system that a, a thought that has all of our people enslaved, has us enslaved because we are, you know, uh, uh, afraid to to express ourselves uniquely. And so I wrote a research paper about this and stuff like that. That came from my rebellious nature. So I was perfect as I was with my rebellious nature, okay? So try not to think of perfection in any way other than just, I don't know what perfection really is. So just divest any thinking that you understand what perfection is. And just basically, just, just, just say, you know, I don't know anything anyway. So Holy Spirit says I'm perfect, I'm just going to take what God says I'm perfect, I'm just going to take what they say for it. And, 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 and then maybe you will open yourself up, or I'll tell you what's happened to me. As I've begun to, to say that I don't know anything, it has opened me up to this beauty, to a beauty. I begin to see beautiful things, Zebra, that I would not have seen if I thought I knew it. Okay. I wouldn't have seen these things if I thought I knew everything. Because if I think I know everything, Holy Spirit can't even talk to me. I'm not going to hear Holy Spirit because I already know everything, Holy Spirit. Who are you talking to? I don't even hear Holy Spirit talking. Mm -hmm. But if I say I don't know anything, that actually opens me up to a deeper truth, a deeper mm -hmm. understanding that I never would have known before. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely, Z. Absolutely. And one of the things that, that um, you can ask Robert when uh, something happened, I learned this from, from uh, which one, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm navigating between two very powerful processes. Mm -hmm. But instead of why is this happening to you, what is this for? Got it? What is this for? Say you ride along, all of a sudden your tire blows out or whatever. And uh, the tire is in good shape or whatever. Instead of why is this happening to me, so forth, what is this for? Mm -hmm. and what that is saying is I am willing to accept that there is a purpose for this. Does that make right. sense? Yes. What is this for? Not mm -hmm. why is this happening, you know. What is this for? And that's giving the universe permission to teach you mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. What is this for? Yes. Giving the universe permission. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, when I say I don't know anything, mm -hmm. it's like I open a part of myself. Because if I don't know anything, then I was at least knowledge here, yeah. you know, because I don't know anything. Yeah. And that makes the world a little less solid, Zebra. It makes it a little less solid. It makes that wall in front of me not as solid anymore. You know, yeah. it makes the, it makes the things that I hear, Ziva, not as 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 clear anymore. And it allows me to see just beyond that wall. Maybe the wall fades a little bit, and mm -hmm. I see something beautiful that I never would have seen before had I thought that everything that I was seeing was real. I never would have seen it before. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a that's a very powerful thing when something happens, mm -hmm. um, painful that is you know everything the, that you worked for is destroyed or whatever. What is this for? Mm -hmm. And 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 that's that doesn't you know that's not victim. Why me? You know what is this for? In other words, teach me, mm -hmm. show me, because I am willing to see. I am willing to see. I'm That's one of the lessons, see. isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. I am willing to see. Thank and you. The, 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 the universe, the Holy Spirit will pour into you, into your life, and bring you the awareness of what this magnificent um, shift is all about. And, and it, because if we can just, in the moment, and it may be something really painful, hurtful, whatever. But just ask, what is this for? Mm -hmm. And be open and receptive. And I, I promise you, Holy Spirit will show you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It Thank is you. magnificent. Everybody ready to move on to paragraph two? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad, you want to read paragraph two? Yeah. God created nothing besides you, and nothing besides you exists, for you are part of him. We just said that. Mm -hmm. What except him can exist? Mm -hmm. Nothing beyond, beyond him can happen, because nothing except him is real. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Your yes. creations add to him as you do. But nothing is added that is different because everything has already been. Yeah. What can upset you except the ethereal? Ephemeral. Ephemeral. Say that again. Ephemeral. 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 And how can the ephemeral be real if you are God's only creation and he created you external? Eternal. I mean eternal, I'm sorry. Your holy mind establishes everything that happens to you. Every response you make to everything you perceive is up to you because your mind determines your perception of it. That's all this is what we talk about. It's just what we've been saying, right? It, it, all this stuff does is bring it all home. That's what all the hell is. I was like the NLP, and I said 10% of your bitch, 90% how you interpret it in the last sentence. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what this is saying. Exactly what I offered for you all to, to, to look at when something happens. What is this for? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, P says, says it's 10% the event, 90% of how we interpret it. But of course, the miracle says it's 0% because they say everything is neutral. You know, and it's really how you interpret it. You know? Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit takes all the percent and puts it to you. And when you ask what is this for, you're not having an interpretation. You're, you're refraining from interpreting it. You're asking the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to show you what this is for. Yeah. You're surrendering. And, and when we don't jump to the victim, mm -hmm. it is so sweet. When, if you can avoid stepping into victim when something challenges happen and just say what is this for i'm willing to see um you know whatever that like that mm -hmm. i'm telling you it will be so beautiful it, it's 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 just sweet it's absolutely sweet and when we talk about that look at sentence number six your holy mind establishes everything that happens to you that's your higher self. Your higher, oh, you don't like this? Oh, we're going to give him some more of this. We're going to give him some more of this. You know, you're going to grow. Robert Flynn, you are going to grow. Can you imagine Can you imagine your higher self speaking to speaking to you there? Robert Flynn, you are going to grow. You don't like this? We're going to give you some more. In other words, you're not going to go through this. You're going to grow you're gonna through grow this. Through. You are going to grow and evolve through this. Absolutely. 
And if you are willing to have everything that happens to you be something that happens for you, oh, it, oh. There it is right there. Your holy mind establishes everything that happens to you. <laughs> it didn't say it didn't say most things. <laughs> it didn't say it didn't say it didn't say 90%. Okay. It didn't say none of that. It said everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See. It's difficult for me to accept that if I experience negative things in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can understand the positive, but when something negative happens, I find it difficult to believe that God would have anything to do with that. But who, but who <laughs> names it negative? If I experience pain or discomfort or wind up in a hospital as a result of something happening to me, I can only perceive that as negative. Really? How many times? Because I just said to you, what is this for? Is that next, making it negative? I'm asking you to choose not to have the negative experience. Here's the deal. This is this is okay. like really, this is this, I'm getting down to the nitty-gritty stuff now. When something happens that previously mm -hmm. would have been perceived by you as negative. Okay. But now you say, what is this for? Holy Spirit, what is this for? You didn't go to negative. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will pour upon you an awakening and awareness of why you are experiencing this and what the benefits and what the growth is and what the evolution is. I'm telling you, it, 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 it works, Robin. But you have to get into the habit of not going to victim first, but being willing to accept that the Holy Spirit doesn't bring anything into our lives without a purpose. You can say Holy Spirit, you can say your right mind or your holy mind. It's all it's all relative. It's all right. the same thing. Right. You can say that. Right. It's all the same it's thing. The same. There's, there, there, there's no difference. So Try not, let's, try, let's try not to think about a Mack truck. But there's a lot of things that give you discomfort then outside of getting hit by a truck going to the hospital. You know, you get upset. Like, you know, I don't know how many times during the day you get upset. I'm sure you don't probably don't get upset that much. No, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't expect things to be running along smoothly all the time. Right. I realize life has got its setbacks and it's a little bit false. But, but hold on, hold on. I'm just, I'm just trying to say, I'm, I, I need to, I'm trying to go with this. Okay, sure. I'm saying, I'm trying to keep the extreme things out, okay? Yeah. So the things throughout the day that give you a charge, yes. you know what they are, man. Yes. We don't have to get into a conversation about it. You know what they are, okay? Okay. So the things in your day that give you charge are the things that are going to continue mm -hmm. to happen to you until they no longer Give you a chunk. Yes, yes. Hello. That's all there is to it. You want to stop? Here. Don't let it get to you anymore. Exactly. What is this for? Because you are bigger than that. Yes. Yes. You are bigger than any type of challenge or problem or something that little you know, small minded thing that might have pissed you off. That's what it's talking about in the last chapter about grandeur. Yeah. Not walking around with your chest puffed up, grandiosity. Yeah. It's talking about that you are bigger than this. You are the power of God in expression. So if you are God, why would God be getting upset because somebody, for example, cut them off in traffic? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? If you're really God, why would God get, get upset if somebody cut them off in traffic? Okay. So since you really are God, but there's a distance because you don't really associate yourself with God. Okay, so we're going to continue to get them cut off from traffic until getting cut off from traffic ain't a thing to him anymore. And he grows into that into that grandeur, which is already him. Exactly. Exactly. 
You don't like this? Okay, we're gonna continue to do it. You don't like when people don't say good morning to you? You don't like that? We we're gonna continue to have people don't say good morning to you until it doesn't affect you anymore. And when somebody says you don't don't tell you good morning, it doesn't even bother you because nothing impacts the grandeur of God. God is too big for that. God ain't worried about somebody not saying good morning to him. He doesn't care. Yeah. God just has nothing but love. It's just nothing but love. That's all. It's love. That's all. So, in other words, if you're not there, then you're going to still continue to attract more of these things. And when I say attract, I'm saying your higher self is going to continue to bring those things to you until it doesn't bother you. Yeah, so, I have I simplified it? Better? Just, just remember what I said when it, something comes up and it's and, and it happens and you're about to go into the normal reaction, stop, breathe. What is this for? All right. Okay. All right. Um, um, I, I have a question with regards to uh, what you said, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, so is can, can we apply this rule to everything that you know keeps happening uh to us is, is it the result is uh is the result uh that we need to change our our reaction to it which is just uh be um without any charge with regards to that, exactly. Zero. So this is a general, general thing. This is a this is a very right. very general thing. Um. So in other words, Zebra the personality didn't attract it to herself. You mm -hmm. know, Stephen Fleming the personality didn't attract it, but Steve, but Stephen Fleming's higher nature, his God self, the Holy Spirit, you know, is what attracted the event. Stephen right. Fleming's holy mind is what is what created the event. Stephen mm -hmm. Fleming, the personality, was like, "What the heck is going on here?" You know, he, it's up to him to get an alignment. He has to get an alignment and and and, and realize his true nature mm -hmm. and realize who he really is. Okay. Recognize that there is a purpose. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he in other words, being the grandeur, being 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 in alignment with. The grandeur part. I mean, it's like, you know, in other words, would God be upset if he got cut off in traffic? You know? So why is Stephen Fleming getting upset when he got cut off in traffic? Okay, so there's a dissonance here. <laughs> there's a dissonance here. Let's get him cut, let's cut him off some more in traffic. So tomorrow he has to go here. We're gonna have some more people cut him off in traffic. That we're gonna do it until about 10 times. Yeah, so. we, yeah. yeah I'm serious. Yeah. You're gonna have all kinds of people cut him oh, off in traffic. Okay. Throughout the whole way. Throughout the whole way, because he is gonna grow through this. It's not to it's not to attack Stephen Blue. Right. It's for him. It's so that he can grow past it. Yeah, exactly. So 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 that it, that it won't so that it won't get between him and his true nature anymore. So that this temporary state of being, you know, where I am upset and things like that where that finally gets out of the way and I'm just more in the line of my children, where that doesn't bother me anymore. Exactly. And if there's something else that bothers me, then I'm gonna have to get some more of that. Exactly. Get some more of that. Exactly. I don't like it if people don't say good morning to me, and I'm gonna have all kinds of people that say good morning to me. Exactly. I'm gonna just, and then when I say attracted to me, yeah, it's my higher self that's making it all happen. Now nobody's saying good morning to me. What the heck is going on? Until it doesn't bother me anymore. So it doesn't bother That's me right. anymore. That is so true. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We doing good here. So is it my turn to read? Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. God does not change his mind about you for he is not uncertain of himself. And what he knows can be known because he does not know it only for himself. He created you for himself 
but he gave you the power to create for yourself so you would be like him. That is why your mind is holy. Can anything exceed the love of God? Can anything then exceed your will? Nothing can reach you from beyond it because being in God, you encompass everything. Believe this and you will realize how much is up to you. When anything threatens your peace of mind, ask yourself, has God changed his mind about me? Then accept his decision, for it is indeed changeless. And refuse to change your mind about yourself. God will never decide against you. Or he would be deciding against himself. And that answers a whole bunch of stuff that we just talked about in the past paragraphs. <laughs> this, this is a powerful paragraph. Absolutely. It is a very powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. So we got a couple of minutes to discuss. Anybody have any uh, comments or questions? Ziba? Um. I don't think so. Yeah. Dad, do you have any comments or questions? No, that, this last paragraph sheds some light on what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't succinct. I mean, it's like... It just, it, it, just, was, it, just, it just brought it home. I was, I was over here going... Yeah, it brought it home. It brought it home. Yeah. It brought it home. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, this has been a wonderful evening. I have enjoyed the conversation and um, I have enjoyed, you know, bouncing around the ideas like a ball and stuff like that, like a little beach ball and stuff, you know, little ideas of truth and then bouncing it into over by Ziba in the virtual world and Ziba bounces it back. So it's been a beautiful, uh, a beautiful play that we've had tonight, yeah. you know, we, we got a chance to play. Thank you. What, what do you think, Zebra? Uh, yes, it was very nice. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. I just, I, I feel blessed, um, you know, every time we have the, this class, I just Same. feel blessed. Thank you, Zebra. So do I. So do I. All right, so, Mom, you want to? I'm putting you to work, Mark. You want to uh, pray us out? <laughs> I'm putting you to work. You ain't been here in a while. I'm putting you to work. <laughs> what do I love to do most of all? You like praying. Wrote a book about it. Oh, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As we hold these hands, and we, we are holding your hand also, Ziba. Thank you. Imagine your hand in my hand. My God, oh, you are so amazing. And the joy and the purpose and the extraordinary that you bring into our lives, whether we understand it or recognize it or not. For you see us as we truly are. And you know beyond all doubt that we are whole and perfect as you created us. And it is your desire to lay out the pathway where we walk into that realization ourselves. And so we know that whatever occurs, it is always for our highest good. It is to bring us closer and closer to living in the kingdom 24 7. And so, as we go our separate ways tonight, go before us preparing our way for success and ease of movement and clarification. And keep us joined together at our hearts until we are here together once again with you. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. So it is. So it is. Amen. Amen. All right, Ziba. I appreciate you. Night, night, Ziba. Oh, good night. Thank you very much. Good, good was, to see you again. It's it was been a while for me. It was fun, my sister. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you, thank you. So, Zeb, I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have this stuff uh, uploaded uh, uh, tonight. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Yeah. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye, honey. Bye, honey. I love you. I love you. Love more. you too. <laughs> thank you.